Hey folks, it's Pat here. I got a chapter 13 question that I want to cover here real quick. I've um, got a request on this guy and that's explained and unexplained variation in the least squares regression line. Now this problem looks a little bit more intimidating because as soon as you see it, you see all this junk right here and that's stuff you probably haven't seen before. <laughs> okay, it's just like, oh, what am I going to do? But um, all of these are just, um, you know, the, most of the stuff you've already seen. And so let's break it down piece by piece. Um, the first thing that I want you to notice in these problems, of course, is your uh, regression equation, which you've seen before. And here's your plot, and here's your data, all right? So the only thing that's kind of new in these is this, all right? Well, that, and then we're actually going to calculate um, R in this one. I'll show you how to do that here in just a sec. But anyway, um, let's break these equations down a little bit, just so that they're a little bit less intimidating, all right? So there's three different um, there's three different uh, intermediate calculations that we're going to make in here, and fortunately, you don't have to make these calculations. You just need to know what they are, all right? Um, so with each one of these, what we do is we take a value of y, all right? So if the, like this first one here is our error, okay? So it's the difference between y our observed value of y and what our predicted value of y. So we take that, so we take y, subtract our predicted value of y, square that to get rid of the negative, okay, and then add all those up. All right, these are our error terms here, and so this here is called our sum of squared error, okay. This guy right here, we're taking our predicted value of y, y hat, we're subtracting out our mean, and we're squaring that. So this is actually what we think the y values are going to be. And so this is called the sum of the squared sum of reg the regression of some squares. Sorry, I always get that one done. This is actually your regression right here, okay? And then this last one here is where we take the observed value of y and subtract our mean of y, square that, all right, and then total all this one, this is the total of some squares, okay? So if you took this, our error term, plus our regression, and add it together, you get our total on this one. All right, so this is the important one, all right? Whenever we see this y hat minus y bar, all right, y bar, of course, being mean, this is how much um, basically we're trying to predict with our model, okay? And this is how much we failed to predict. And of course, if you add those two together, you get what what is actually there. Now, in real life, you don't get this term, all right, because you have no idea how many y's are out there and stuff like that. But, um, the, you, well, you get, a, you get a measure of this, all right? So, but um, really, when it comes down to it, this is the one that we're interested in, okay? And so answering these questions is going to involve a combination of looking these things up, maybe making some calculations on this one, and then also at the same point in time uh, using the regression equation uh, to answer some of the questions. And so let's just dive into a few of them here, shall we? So for the first data point, um, so for the data point 61.5 and 67.8, the value of the residual is what? The residual is just the difference between the actual value and the predicted value. So this one, we have to use the regression equation here to come up with a predicted value of y and then just subtract that from the actual value, okay? So our actual value of y, so the data points 61.5 and 67.8. So 67.8 is our y, so we're gonna use our x, 61.5, to plug into this equation to get our predicted value of y. And so our equation, if you did the last video, one dot, uh, well, let's put the y value in first, or the x value in first, which was uh, 61.5. 61.5 times our slope, which is negative 1.01. Um, add our intercept, which is 132.54. So our predicted value of y here, given this value of x, 61.5, is 70.425. And then we just take our actual value of y, which was 67.8, and subtract that 70. So we're going to get a negative residual here, negative 2.625. So we failed. We overshot that one by 6.25 when we were actually doing the, the, the calculation or the predicted value. Um, that's okay. That's absolutely okay. All right. So, But that's what a residual is. It's just the difference between the actual value of y and the predicted value of y. Okay, so <clears throat> the least squares regression line gives, given above is said to be a line in which best fits the sample data. So the line of best fit is always your regression line. Okay, so it's y hat minus y bar. 
Okay, term best fits is used because the line has an equation that minimizes the error term. Okay, so this is error, sum of square error, error of sum squares right here. Okay, we try and get this one right, so we get less of this. Think about that. If we didn't do any predictions, this thing would be maximum. Okay, it would all be error. <laughs> all right, and so it's just asking you what's the error sum of squares. Sometimes it asks you which one does fit it and which one minimizes it. So um, in this case, it's asking us um, because the line has an equation that minimizes the error, okay? And the error for this one, of course, is 23, okay? Total variation, the sample y is given by this guy right here, the total, all right? So total, total, all right? For which this data is uh, 259, 259, okay? And then finally, we get one of these values here, which is R square. R square is the proportion of the total variation of the sample values that is explained by estimated linear relationship between X and Y. This is our estimated relationship between linear X and Y, okay? And so in order to get R square, which is basically, um, you know, how much variation our model is explained by a regression equation, which would be the predicted value of Y minus Y bar squared, all added together, all right, so this guy right here, we have to take that and divide it by the actual variation, which is the total right here. So divided by 259.1320, and bam, that's our R squared right there, okay? So 0 0.9178, there we go. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and check that. Ta-da, we got that one right. Let's try one more, just to kind of run you through this a little bit more. So, because once you get the hang of these, they're pretty straightforward, okay? So, number one, the least squared regression line given above is said to be the line which best fits the sample data. The term best fits is used because the line has an equation that minimizes, and so, Whenever we're looking at the line of best fit, we want the best one we can find because it minimizes the total error or the error of some squares. And so if we go up here and take a look at this one, um, here's our regression line. All right, so predicted y minus y bar squared. So that's what we think we can predict. And then, of course, the actual value of y minus the predicted value, that's our error term. So we try and get this one higher so that we get this one lower. All right, and so error sum of squares is the lower number. Error sum is almost always going to be the lowest number, okay? Total is always going to be the highest number, always. All right, and so, of course, your regression is going to be the one in the middle, usually. All right, so here we go. For the data point 285.4, uh, x and then y is 259.1, the value of the residual is what? So to find the residual, all we do is take the predicted value of y and then subtract the actual value of y. So the predicted or the predicted value of y, of course, we have to use the x term, 285.4, and then plug that into the regression equation. Okay, so we're gonna take the x term, multiply it by 1.09. Okay. Uh, notice this, we've actually got a negative uh, slope for a change. So negative, so this is our slope. We're going to add in our slope, or in this case it's negative, just subtract it, 2.05. And so our predicted value of y is 285.036, but our actual value of y was 259.1. So all we have to do, 259.1 minus whatever our predicted value was gives us a residual. Right there, so we overshot this one by 25.936, there we go. Okay, so variation in the sample y values that is not explained by the estimated linear relationship between x and y is the error term, okay? So if this is our predicted, if this is our prediction right here, but this is what we actually saw, then the difference between those two is our error term, okay? And so that's the stuff that's not explained by our regression or estimated linear relationship. Uh, so error sum squares for which one of this one is 1809 or 1860. All right, the proportion of the total variation sample y values that can explained by the estimated linear relationship between x and y is what? This is r squared again. And so to get r squared, all we have to do is take this guy, which I just discovered you can just click on, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> and then you take that, so the uh, total of the regression, and then you divide it by, there we go, and there's divide by um, the total. Okay, bam, oops.
Bam. Yeah, there's our R square. R square is um, can be interpreted as a percent. All right, so if you ever get one that's over one or negative or, or less than zero, you did it wrong. <laughs> so try again. <laughs> all right, here we go. Ta-da, got all of those right. So I hope that helps. This is a little bit more of a complicated problem, but if you get this one, your regression is really going to fall into place for you. Okay, thank God we don't have to calculate these by hand just because it's not hard. It's just tedious. But you still have to understand what you're looking at, whether we're talking about the error term, the regression, or the total, okay? And so remember to get R squared, you just take your, your regression divided by, by your total, and everything else is basically going to be pointing towards this error in one way or another, okay? So just know what these things are. They do switch these columns up on you, so be careful with it, all right? But likewise, um, you know, most of the pieces have probably fallen into place for you by now. So uh, if you do have any questions to get jammed up on this one, please ping me. Otherwise, we'll, we'll catch you all in the next video.